Okay, dear students, uh, we will go into the last session that we will be doing on projectile motion. And this part, which will be the part four of this projectile motion series, will be placed on projectile on an inclined plane. So you have an inclined plane of angle theta and you're projecting some object which is making an angle of theta with the inclined plane in this way. So as we have already discussed many times, it's not necessary that the X and Y axis have to be uh, the traditional ways. If you're talking about inclined planes, then it makes sense that you take the X direction in this way and the Y direction in this way. So in that case, you will have to resolve the components of the velocity in this direction and write this as U cos theta and write this as u sine theta. So you have along the x-axis, the velocity, you have maintained the same concept like before, u cos theta. And along the y-axis, you're writing here as u sine theta. Okay, now uh, further, what you can do is that if I take an object, and let's say that uh, it's acceleration to gravity in this direction. So then uh, you can see that if this angle is theta, then this angle will also be theta. So if I resolve the acceleration to gravity in this direction, so I will get uh, g cos theta along this direction and I'll get g sin theta along this direction. That means that you can see that the acceleration along the y direction will have to be taken as g cos theta and the acceleration along the y direction has to be taken as g sin theta. Okay, so in projectile motion, you'll do like that. And when this object will be projected and it will come to the ground, so you can, of course, use equations like saying that when it comes here to the ground, so you will not say that SY is from the ground height. You'll say that for this point, SY will be zero because the Y-axis is from this point. Along the X-axis, remember that SY will always be zero. And then you can you find out, let's say, time of flight. Don't use the formulas that you have studied before. For time of flight, you can derive from base and then write the equations, whatever you want to do from here. Similarly, in uh, uh, you know coming up in projectile motion, you could also be uh, moving in projectile motion. It's possible, and then you may project a body, uh, you know, from somewhere here. So if it is having a velocity, this object, and he's projecting it, let's say in the vertical direction, then uh, uh, you know for certain advanced problems, you'll have to take here because you are standing on top here, and if you are observing it from the ground, so depending on where you observe it. If you are a ground observer, then you are certainly going to see a horizontal component of the velocity. That is you. And in addition to it, this ux will be the velocity of the car. And the velocity in the y direction will be how it is projected from here, uy. And then the velocity seen by this ground observer will be this one, okay, which is making an angle of theta. But if you solve the problem from the uh, frame of reference of the car, then the car person will say that, uh, you know, I have only the vertical component of velocity. I don't have any horizontal component because he will find himself at rest with respect to the car and therefore he's not going to see any horizontal component. So you can also solve some problems from these type of moving frames of reference for projectile motion. Okay. So I hope this concept is clear. Thank you so much for watching.